All right, before I go ahead with uh, SAP XCM US payroll, let me give you my introduction. My name is Ashish. I have a total 20 years of experience, a combination of SAP XCM and a success factor. When I was in SAP XCM, I was uh, known for the payroll person, and I used to run payroll for various countries, which includes India, Singapore, Malaysia, US, and thailand and uh, so there was a project which i did uh, for uh, for shell company uh, shell petroleum and for that in 97 country i have run the payroll so uh, and uh, i also take care of success factor and success factor uh, you know because both the product of sap so uh, sooner or later you have to learn both the product if you are in success factor you have to learn sap hcm or if you are in sap hcm you have to learn success factor because it serves as an added advantage when you go for an interview and you know when they see the background into both uh, company normally they prefer so in today's session uh, we are going to learn specifically about us payroll now when you be talking about the us payroll which means uh, uh, you know we only are going to focus on the taxes statutory deductions and the local specific uh, taxes which are there only related with the US. See, the taxes in India, if you talk about the India payroll, it will be completely different. The taxes which will be there in UK, it will be very different. The taxes which will be there in US, it will be very different. And Canada, every country, they have their own taxes and strategy deduction, which are completely different. Majority of people, you know they think and some of the trainer they also tell them you know that once you have learned the payroll uh it is very easy to uh you know that you can get into another payroll also which is actually not true uh you know the major uh when it comes to the taxes and the strategy deduction this is where you have to focus on things the basic uh configuration it might be the same but uh, the specific to those local, uh, you know, you have to focus on those uh, local uh, related, uh, you know, taxes. Like, for example, um, when we hire somebody in India, um, you straight away hire and you maintain the taxes as per the slab, which is identified in for that particular year. And your taxes starts getting calculated, right, once you run the payroll. But when it comes to U.S., when you hire somebody and when you maintain the residential address of an employee, uh, based on the uh, location that you have maintained, their residential taxes gets calculated. And if you do not maintain the address, it will show you dumb. So here, you know, in just in a hiring only, you will see that there is a difference between US and India. So the point, uh, you know, which I'm actually trying to say that every country taxes it is different. So if you have learned U.S. payroll, uh, your uh, and if you want to make a career in payroll, then uh, you know it should not stop here only. After that, you should continue to learn the other country payroll also. Now uh, let's also talk about what is uh, you know SAP HCM. Actually, you would have often heard you know heard somewhere you know they write SAP HCM and some places they write SAP HR. Uh, let's make it an interactive session team because that's how I'll get to know that how much you understand about SAP HCM and how much you understand about, uh, uh, you know, so that um, I'll understand like you know, which area I need to focus on more. So what is the basic difference between why they write some places SAP HCM and why they write some place SAP HR? No, I thought it's both are the same. No, it's not same. Okay. <laughs> That's the reason I ask you. I think every terminology, um, it is different, right? So, uh, okay, SAP, HCM, it's, if you talk about, it's a HCM, it is talking, it is human capital management, right? So in between that C, if you see, that is capital. So uh, there is a capital involved, whatever activity you'll be doing in your SAP, HCM. And if you talk about SAP HR, it's a human resource. There is no finance or capital which is involved. 
Now, if you look at the domain HR people, what they do, whatever activity they do, there is no finance activity which is involved, right? But with the introduction of SAP, uh, see, payroll was also with the finance, right? But with the introduction of SAP, uh, you know, payroll shifted to HR and HR has started taking care of all the payroll activity and rest of the thing. And even if you look at like training and event management, uh, HR only deals with, you know, that who's going to come and who's going to take the training, right? But uh, the actual finance uh, payment and everything, they pass on everything to the finance team. But with the SAP, you have to do everything. Whether it's a training and event management, I mean, you have to pay them and you have to get their, uh, you know, everything done. Except for recruitment, where the HR takes care of all the salary activity, rest everything, it was there with the finance team and finance used to do all these payments and everything. That's the one thing. Second thing, uh, all those people who want to learn uh, SAP HCM, nowadays we also see uh, there is, uh, you know, success factor. Now, SAP HCM and success factor, it's a two different ERP. Now, what is the basic difference between SAP HCM and your success factor? Now, I don't want this answer from uh, Sharik and Mario because you both know very well you, you're getting trained by me only in success factor. So I want this answer from Lava or from Suniti. One is from on-premise, one is for cloud solutions. Yes, that's right. One is the on-premise and one another is a cloud-based solution. But what is the basic difference between cloud and premise? So maybe pricing and maintenance. <laughs> no, that is that is true, Lava. The pricing and maintenance that is actually true. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that is the later part of it. We'll discuss it, but that is not wrong. That is absolutely fine. But I just want to know on the basic terms, if I have to explain somebody, you know, that what is the basic difference between a premise-based solution and your cloud-based solution, then how can I, like, for example, Suniti is there, right? I'm not sure that how much she's aware about. So if you have to explain to Suniti, how are you going to explain this to her? <clears throat> on premise means like you have to install everything on your yes. side, and uh, cloud means with, with the internet also you can access. Uh, yes, that is a basic difference. Premise with solution that actually means team. Like for example, I'm I'm sure that everybody would have gone to an a company and they would have seen that IT setup right in some area of an IT setup they have a server which is installed. Right, and they don't allow you to enter inside that room. And if you go inside that room, you will find that when it is fully AC and uh, you know. So when you see such kind of a setup, just understand that is your on-premise solution, which means any software if you want to access, you have to be at a particular premise. And the moment you leave that particular premise of a company, you will not be able to access that particular software. So such kind of a setup, it is known as a on-premise solution. Now, on-premise has its own advantage, advantage of your own data security, uh, you know, which is nowadays, there's a lot of concern coming with the data security, right? So uh, with on-premise, you know, the, your data is there with your own premises and you can do anything, whatever you want. But with the cloud solution, there is a server in cloud also, but that server is not maintained by us. That server is maintained directly by the success factor itself. And we take base on the subscription from them, right? So that is the basic difference between your on cloud and your premise based solution. Okay, can you also give me some uh, few example of a, a you know cloud based solution that we use on day to day basis? There's a lot of thing that we use on a, which is on cloud, right? Which is which we use on day to day basis. Our Gmail, Facebook, everything. Yes, yes. Facebook, that's right, uh, Lava. So the Facebook, uh, you know, that we use, not only just once, right? After every few hours, you know, we check up what our friends are doing, right? So your LinkedIn account, which is there that you check. LinkedIn, it's not that everybody check it on day-to-day -day basis, but your Gmail account, which is there, your Facebook account, which is there, right? So like, for example, if you're traveling from Delhi to Mumbai, and uh, you know you're sitting at the airport, so you'll not carry your hardware from Delhi to Mumbai, right? The moment you reach to Mumbai, 
you take out your cell phone and as far as it has an internet connection and you have a credential, you will start using that. So that is basically, uh, you know, such kind of a setup. It is known as a cloud-based solution. Anyhow, we're not discussing more on a cloud-based solution. That was the only introduction which I actually wanted to give. This uh, session is all about SAP HCM and all the module that we're going to cover. Now, SAP HCM, uh, you know, ERP has been there for very long. I think it's almost like 45 years has been there in the market. And uh, SAP captures almost like 80% of a market share. That's the reason the demand for SAP consultant is always there and not only just in a particular country across the globe you know so there is always a demand for uh, and especially the payroll consultant because not many people there they like to do the calculations so if you are a payroll consultant you're always paid high and let me also tell you team that uh, payroll consultant get paid highest amongst all the module whether it's a finance whether it's a sd or mm if you are a payroll consultant, you will always get paid high. Now, another thing it comes, why, you know, that we get paid high, the very simple reason it is like, even if uh, there is a 50 pesa also, which is a difference, it is coming now, your employee, they will start shouting. Nobody wants, you know, that 50 pesa also to be deducted from their employee. And then there is a lot of taxes, strategy deductions, you know, there's a whole lot of government activity for that particular country right so there's a whole lot of activity which you have to take care of all these now sap hcm uh, you will find into all the industry so you will see them into automobile and auto component chemical logistic manufacturing and high tech uh, consumer product industrial machinery and the component mill products so you name the industry sap is already present there uh, you know in every industry and uh, then apart from this, uh, you will, what is SAP? Uh, normally what happens, you know, team, uh, you would have, if you have noticed, whenever I have uh, used, you know, I have always said SAP. I have not said SAP. Because if you, it is not one word. Each character here, it's, it's a different meaning to it. You can see S stands for systems, application, and product in data processing, right? So that is the reason we never call it as a SAP. We always call it as a SAP. Now, this is one of the very, uh, my interview tricks are there. When I take the interview of a fresher, right? And whenever the fresher says, you know, it's a SAP, so I just reject him then and there, because I know that another you know, person, person basic knowledge is not there in SAP. So uh, SAP was actually started by four friends uh, who were working in IBM in Germany. And they you know, there they realized that interconnection between one department to another department is not very good. So uh, what they, uh, you know, like for example, if they wanted some data, so they have to wait for them. And certain time what happens, you know, if employee from other department they want, then only they will share it, otherwise they will not share it. So to overcome such kind of an, um, you know, so that you don't have to depend on any particular department data, they came with SAP and slowly and gradually, you know, they started introducing all the module into your uh, SAP. One another question thing which I want to address before we go ahead, lots of people, they say that, you know, SAP, um, uh, you know, it has to shift from SAP to success factor and SAP will stop from 2025 or 2028, if you hear such kind of a thing, do not believe all these things. SAP HCM is going to shift from ECC to HANA system, not, you know, from uh, from ECC to success factor system, they're going to shift. So SAP HCM will be there very much after 2028, after 30, after 2040 also SAP HCM. So companies who have invested so much of money, they will certainly not in shift into success factor, right? So success factor is a different ERP and this is a different ERP. That's a different thing that both the product now, uh, it is actually part of a SAP. But uh, the only change which is going to come that is from ECC to HANA. What is HANA? HANA is a database which is much faster. Now, I don't want to get into what is HANA and how actually HANA was started. But to be very uh, in simple word, if I tell you, uh, you know that uh, what used to happen that uh, uh, when SAP, okay, let me tell you, give you that example also. 
Now, SCP, when it was installed in Indian Railway, and you know that uh, in every location in India, they have like four to five railway reservation center. What used to happen, you know, every day that SAP used to be down, every day, you know, it used to crash and it used to down. So that's how HANA was introduced so that they speed up the database. That's that. So that is what the HANA actually does. So it is shifting from ECC to HANA. It's not going to close down. Okay. Now, the module that we're going to cover into your, okay, there are three architecture. One is a presentation architecture, one is an application architecture, and another is a database architecture. Let me show you what is all these architecture it is. So if you talk about this is an application architecture, if I uh, open this here, so here you will see your screen will open, and this screen will have your uh, login detail. So you just have to type it your uh, login detail here and you will see here your uh, credential are coming so this is your client every client will be different so uh, i'm they will have the depends upon how the basis team actually have configured the system let's suppose if i have to log in into the system i'll take it here and i will enter my uh, password and if i press enter this is how your sap premise based uh, solution looks like, which is actually SAP Easy Access, right? This is a home page of your SAP, uh, you know, SAP HCM. And if you ask me my personal opinion team, uh, my personal favorite ERP is SAP HCM only, you know, because if you learn this, you know, you will see that it is so much into detail and it has a solution for everything. But it's just that it is very costly to install in the mid-size or the smaller level companies. That's, that, that is the reason. Bigger companies, they have it, but middle and the smaller companies, they go with the success factor. So here you can see finance, here you can see logistic, here you can see accounting, and so many other modules also you will see inside this, but we are focusing only on the HCM. All right. And let's suppose, so the, this is your, uh, we just talked about that was the application, and this is a presentation ar architecture. So this detail, what you're seeing, this is a presentation architecture. And then there is a one more architecture. It is a database architecture. So if you come here and let's suppose if I want to see the data for somebody, so I will just type here. Now, I don't remember the name of an employee that I have actually hired, but I can just figure it out with some different detailed person earlier company code. Uh, hold on. This company code, I'll just see which is there actually for USA. This is there for USA. Somebody has defined this company code six. Okay, anyhow, let's go ahead. Let's see how many employees. Oh, there's no employee. I knew that there will be no employee here. Okay, this is currency, huh? Anyhow, let's come into the USD currency. Uh, USD, and I want to see for 3,000 best on USA. Here, you'll find. So if I see here, you'll find there is a lot of um, employee is going to come here. So this, these are all the employee. You can see employee number and you can see their employee name, right? So this is actually, it is your database architecture. From where this data it is coming, it is from, coming from the database architecture it is. So once we start with a regular session, we're going to uh, focus more on what is all this architecture, what all detail which is there, the documentation which is involved. Now, every implementation, there is a methodology. With success factor, I have discussed about uh, your uh, different methodology there, right? But with your SAP HCM, there is a, a SAP methodology, which is actually known as a accelerated SAP methodology. This also has a five phase, uh, which includes project preparation. More or less, uh, you know, the work is the same, but it's just that your uh, terminology, which is different, so this is project preparation, this is blueprint, this is realization, this is final preparation, this is go live and support. Now what we do in the project preparation, we just start preparing the project as is and to be the document we start preparing. The business blueprint is nothing, it's just that, uh, just like workbook team in success factor, it is a blueprint here, we prepare that into the word document. It is actually the sketch. In that is sketch, you know, you inform to the company that this is what you're going to uh, do the configuration and this is what they'll be getting once the complete configuration it is done the realization is nothing it's just your uh, configuration configuration based on the blueprint final preparation is nothing it's just a test you test uh, everything 
test is very important, right? Because if your, uh, you know, product fails, if you launch it and, uh, you know, and people, it hangs or if people are not liking it, uh, you know, it, uh, so it, it will give a very, uh, you know, bad mouth publicity. So, and then the fifth phase, it is go live and support. So once test and everything has been successful, then we just go ahead and uh, we make the product as go live. And after go live, uh, your support will start. Okay, many people, they are also into the confusion that uh, once a company, they have implemented the project, what will happen to them? See, every company they have implemented the project, there is always a support which is required. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, and that support, it's a, which is an ongoing process. All right, so the job will always be there because of a support. And, and also new companies are also coming, right? So, uh, so never think of you know that if the implementation is done, then what will uh, we know what will happen? It, you will always be a part of in that case support project. Now these are the phases team and the documentation which is actually required in each of the phases. So you can see in project preparation, these are the document in business fluid question and answer database blueprint. So all these documentation, I'm not discussing all these things right now because it's just a demo session and. I don't want to make my demo session very lengthy because I know nobody likes a lengthy demo session. So I just want to keep it to the point and precise. Now, the first module that we're going to do, uh, that is your organization management. What is organization management? Organization management is nothing. It's just your organization structure. Every company, whether it's a big company or it's a small company, there is an organization structure, right? Whether it is from top to bottom or bottom to top. Whether it's just a five employee or 5,000 employee, there'll always be the structure in that company, right? So that structure we're going to configure in a system. So that structure, you know, it just makes things transparent. And, uh, you know, and if you want to see those structures, it's like and you can create your structure at any point of time. This is a very small structure, actually, I have created. And this was a long time back I have created. I'm not changed any slide or something. So you can, I created that time ABC India Limited Company. And you can see it is it was present into Bangalore and Hyderabad. So in Bangalore, you can see they have a IT department, and in Hyderabad, you can see. Uh, no, hold on. In Bangalore, you can see there is an IT division, and then there is a HR division, right? And for Hyderabad, we have not defined this. In IT division, also you can see there is a position which is known as your. Uh, this is actually a again a department, IT department. This is the uh, position which is IT manager, and you can also see the person actually who's holding this position, right? So this is how you will create all these structure. So uh, with a regular session, we're going to see how we can create all these structure. Let me show you this structure in a system also. So I'll just come here. And there are various ways through which you can create the structure, but uh, in demo session, I'll just show you the simplest one. You can check all the structure. So if I come here and click on this uh, change, and that change, you will see all these structure is going to come. And so here you can see on the left hand side, team, you can see there are so many. So these companies are created by me only with the different batches. My God. I've... <sighs> okay. You can see there are so many companies which is coming here. Like, for example, let's go ahead with the iTech computer. If I double click on this, Achha, this is not fully defined. Okay, this is not fully defined. So let's see Apex Chemical. Okay, anyhow, I'll just show you that here only. So you can see this is your company name, which is Apex Chemical. This you can see there is a position which is VP operation, and you can also see the person actually who's holding it. Then below that, there is a CFO. You can see the CFO also. This is a depart. Oh, there are so many positions here. And you can see all these positions, you know, employee that who's holding this position. So there's a lot of thinking. This is how you will create your structure. Let me show you one thing more if they have created. Uh, I'll come to the task assignment and here you will also see, achha, they have not created here, but I have created. If I come here and if I click here into your task assignment, I'll just show you that apart from creating a position and your um, org you know, organization unit, you can also create your job. You can also create your task and then you can also create your location, location to which employees actually working. So like this, you know, you can create your all these structure. 
So uh, apart from creating this structure, you also represent that into the graphical structure also. So let me show you the graphical uh, structure. So wherever you see info system, it's nothing, it's just your report. So here with the organization structure with the position, and I will select here, I think the company that we selected that was Epix Chemical, right? So from wherever, whichever the stretch, you know, you want to select that, you know, it will show you if you do not want to see the entire company structure. And if you want to see from here, you can also select it. But I am OK with that. I want to see the entire company structure. So I'll select this. I'll execute this. Once you execute this, you will see. Uh, you know, the structure will start displaying here. So this is achha, this is structure is the same. Uh, you know, I'll just click here and here you will see your graphical structure will start showing in the system. So this is how you can see all these structure. Now the structure is actually quite big and there is no way that you can save this, you know, and actually you can save all this also, but you can't make it smaller actually this one. So anyway, I'll close this one. So that is how you see your all these organization management. Next module we're going to cover that is your personal administration. Does anybody has any idea what is personal administration? Nobody? Administrative stuff. Sorry, Mario? Uh, it's to administer the stuff, like for the people that are working in the company? Yes, it is about maintaining employee data. It is about, uh, you know, doing, maintaining all the activity for employee from hiring till retirement. So uh, you'd have seen, you know, when you join a company, uh, your company always give you a certain sheet to fill, right? Which has your combination of your own personal data and some of your company data, which is there, right? So, so all those data that you fill, uh, all do, you know, we have to maintain into the personal administration. Now, uh, Personal administration is just not only about implementing employee data. There is a lot of thing which is there in personal administration, creating your action, creating your info type, creating your info group, screen modification, uh, you know, and so like this, you know, there is a lot of thing which happens into your personal administration. And so we're going to see all those details. Like, for example, if I come here, so uh, you can, if I click here into your PA30, you will see employee personal number and you can see all these action right so if you have maintained uh, all these detail so it will show you here let me show you also i think we selected the company code was 3000 right so if i select one employee from here and uh, let's go ahead with uh, this employee and here if i select a press enter you will see some of them it is coming as a tick mark so which means this data is actually uh, maintain for this employee. Like, for example, you can see this employee is working in a corporate in the United States. He's an active and hourly rate employee. He's working in Philadelphia and he's actually getting his salary as a monthly, right? And if you want to see his address, personal data, let's see his address. If I come here and select as a display option, so you will be able to see this employee address, right? So, like this, you will see. So, whatever this data it is coming, so all these data you will have to maintain. Then you can also see there is your info group it is coming. We are also going to learn how we can create your info group, the screen modification. Like, for example, there is a, a all, let's continue the address only. In your address, you can see there are certain unwanted fields which is coming. If your client do not want all these unwanted fields, you can also hide all these fields. So, that is known as a screen modification that we're going to do. And then apart from this screen modification, let me also show you your PA40 where we run all these actions. Now, there was a project which I was I, I did for government of India, which was actually a Rajasthan project, Rajasthan Electricity Vidut Board that we call it, right? So they had a 45 action. So like hiring, you can see ESS, then you can see transfer, relocation, change of pay, change of position, appraisal, right? So like this, you can see all these action and with this action, you can go ahead and create all these detail. Let's come to the PPT now. And with this, you will see like, uh, this is one of the example that I've taken for this employee team, uh, whose name is Parmeshwaran K. And you can see this employee personal number, which is actually from Gujarat. So like this, you, know, you can uh, hire all these employee. You can see here also personal action, which I just showed to you. 
like hiring, retirement, leaving, disciplinary action, termination, planning, global assignment, right? And if you click on hiring, so you can see this info type wise, all these data, it will come, right? So like this also, you will see all these data. Then apart from this, you this also have just shown you that uh, personal data, like how you can see, right? I was showing you the address, right? But here you can see all these personal data, how it comes. So all these details we're going to see with the regular session that how we go ahead with this. Next module that we're going to cover, that is time management. And what do you mean by time management team? It's about the time, how many hours you work and all those. And all right, it is about time, how many hours you work. And uh, so in SAP HCM, uh, your time management is divided into two things. One, it is your negative time management and another, it is positive time management. Uh, your negative positive time management, it is when you're maintaining time in and time out of an employee. So such kind of a uh, time detail, it is known as a positive. Negative, it is you do not maintain anything in the system. You only maintain if an employee has been absent on a particular day. If you do not maintain any absence, system will assume that employee was present for all throughout the month and accordingly it will pay to the employee. We're going to cover both negative and positive mode because almost like 90% of your client, they will go ahead with the positive time management. And um, all right, so... Uh, so there are now this screen, you can see that you, how you record your time. So there are various ways through which you record your time, which one of them, it is clock in and clock out. Then uh, you have a register. This is very important, right? No matter how I tech, you know, the companies will be, but they will still have the register with them. Certain organization, they take their calculated time, you know, the moment you log in into the time, uh, into the computer, you know, so that's how they take their time. Then you have a TMW, which is Time Manager's Workplace. This is a tool actually of SAP tool that you record your time. Nowadays, you also record your time uh, from your mobile. Uh, what is the purpose of recording all these time? The purpose of recording all these time, it is to calculate your how much time you have spent into the organization. And if there is any time which is like, uh, it has a deficit, like if 40 hours if you have to work. If, and if you have not worked for 40 hours in a week, then obviously your pay will be reduced, right? So that is whole purpose of uh, your, uh, you know, uh, maintaining the time management. And it is one of the very important module when it comes to payroll, because your entire payroll, actually, it is dependent upon your time management. And um, then apart from this, Okay, all right. So let's talk about the payroll. Payroll is, actually, when it, we talk about the time management, and as I said, we're going to talk about the positive and negative time management. We also going to talk about uh, basic of your uh, PCR and schema for the time management so that you, know, you also get to know what is a basic PCR and schema in time management. And then this basic PCR and schema, we also going to cover in payroll also because payroll has its own PCR and schema. All right. So the basic part of it, I'll cover it so that you know you people are aware that what is your time, uh, you know, how this certain calculation happens and, oh, you know, if there is a certain solution which is not there in a system, then how you can write with the PCR and schema. So this PCR and schema, it's nothing team. Uh, all those people who are coming from success factor background, it is, it, it is just like writing a business rule. But business rule is very simple, but your schema and PCR is way too complex. But then, yes, you have to learn that. I'm sure if other people, they are able to do that, we can also do that, right? So payroll, uh, almost 70% of a job across the globe in SAP HCM, it will be on payroll only. So, and companies pay a huge amount for payroll consultant. And if you're an experienced person and you will get a very good salary when it comes to payroll. So, um, so payroll, obviously you have your earnings and deductions, uh, then, uh, okay. You have your earnings and deductions. Then you also have your taxes, strategy taxes, right? Uh, local specific taxes. So all those detail, uh, you know, we're going to learn into your payroll. So here you can see in this process, we have your 
uh, we're going to go ahead and do the recruitment. Then we're going to go ahead and start maintaining the data, which we're going to do from the personal administration. So you can see employee taxes, specific master data, benefit, ESI, tax, any applicable. Then you also maintain the time detail about an employee. And then you run the payroll, right? Uh, and then decide, you know, uh, how much is, if there is any deduction, then what all this deduction it is coming. And then you also have to show this to the employee, right? That if there is any deduction, then basically it's a salary slip, which you have to uh, pull out all these reports, right? So all these activity team we will be doing in system. And we're going to see all after maintaining data for an employee, how to run the payroll. Then apart from this, all the factors which influence your payment and deduction, which includes your basic pay, then you have your gratuities, you have your sickness, you have your bonuses, you have your leave. Because with leave, it is like, you know, whether you get paid or you get not paid. If you're overtime, you're getting an extra salary. Night shift allowance, if you're doing it, if you're working a day shift and your company decides to shift you to the night shift, right? So obviously they pay you some extra amount, right? Then whatever it is your basic pay, so all these details we're going to configure in the system. Now, this is one of the screenshots uh, which we have taken from, uh, you know, the U.S. salary. So here you can see this person is actually working in Nevada. And you can see, uh, I don't know, Nevada, uh, whatever they call it. Then here you can see that this is a salary. So this is a salary which is giving an annual salary for this employee is this one. So, and he's getting paid as a semi-monthly, right? So like this, you can see, uh, now here, this is a group and level. This group and level, it is nothing. It's just that if you remember team, when you're done with the interview and you have been selected and the last part, it comes as a salary negotiation, right? So your recruitment team has a salary for all the level, like group this level to what level, level one, two, and three. Like if you've ever appeared for an interview for IBM or Wipro or Infosys, you know, they have all like, like manager one level, manager two level, manager three level, right? So they have all those level by salary. So this you will have to take it out all these detail from the client and you will have to maintain and accordingly, whoever is getting paid what, you will have to maintain those detail and you'll have to run the salary. Now this is your recurring payment and deduction. So as the thing itself is saying, it is a recurring, which means something which is not happening. If you're running the payroll, uh, every monthly then a certain uh you know like your uh this wage type does not come um a monthly or if you're running it bi-monthly then certain uh, your salary component does not appear bi-monthly right so those things are actually known as a recurring payment and deduction like you do donation you don't do donation every time right like you maintain lta lta you don't do that every time right? it's, it's a twice in a four year that you maintain right, which does not appear also every month. So that is all those details. It will come into the recurring payment and deduction. Then you have an additional payment. What is additional payment? Anything which is apart from the salary you're getting. So that will be known as an additional payment. So uh, kind of a bonus that you're getting, right, which is an like, for example, if your salary is 10 lakh rupees, if you're getting anything over that 10 lakh, which normally you get it into the bonus, right? So that is a bonus detail. Now, with the regular session, we're also going to see how the loans are configured, how much is the amount uh, which has been granted by the company and if they're charging any interest or even if they're not charging any interest, then what is the EMI that they are deducting from your salary? So all these details we're going to see in, into the regular configuration, how we can configure your all these details. So here you can see, the loan type, it is like mentioned here is a car loan, right? What is the sequence number? What is the number? Person where he is working, how much is the loan amount which has been granted on which date it has been granted? How much is the deduction? You can see installment, it is coming here. If there is any loan condition, which is there, if there is any interest, or normally what happens, people who are there in the company, right? And especially the senior people, uh, you know, with them, company, they do not charge any interest because there is a very simple reason they do not charge any interest because the company want you to stay, uh, you know, for a longer period of time. So that is the reason you will see that all these interests and everything it is coming. Then you will also see there is a membership fees. Like if you have any LIC uh, maintain and you know, any membership fees that you're paying, it's like you, know, you can also maintain from here. You have an off cycle payment. Okay. Anybody knows what is off cycle team or any question till now? 
with off-cycle payment is if you miss uh, some payments uh, during your pay period and uh, they want to pay that amount after the pay period, then they run the off-cycle payment. Right, that is right. That is uh, correct, Suniti. That is actually known as an off cycle. Like, for example, team, uh, we know that uh, there is another festival which is coming in India, which is Holi, which is one of the very big festival. And if your organization pay bonus on Holi, let's suppose there are 100 people in the organization. Out of 100 people, 99 you have maintained their data. One employee, it just skipped. And you have not paid to that employee. So that employee will come back to you. So obviously, you're not going to store the payroll for 99 employee, right? So in such cases, what you do, you can pay to the employee through the off cycle. So how we maintain off cycle, how we create off cycle, how we run off cycle, what all detail which is required, when we should run the off cycle. This is one of the example that we have discussed, right? Another case, it will be that you have not run the payroll. So you can go ahead and maintain the data and you can run the payroll. So there are various scenario it comes. And all those scenarios that you know we're going to discuss with the off cycle when we're going to uh, configure into the system how we can configure. Then there is a retroactive accounting. What is retroactive, team? Uh, it's money that's paid to the employer when it's when it's owed. Let's say uh, you have a change of salary in June, but then you can only get your new salary in September. So they will have to pay you uh, from June to September, the remainder of, let's right. say uh, your salary is 1.5, let's say 1,500 uh, now. And when you change, you go to 2,000, right? So when you start receiving the 2,000s uh, in, let's say, September, they have to pay you for the other two months. Yeah. The difference. No, that's right. Uh, I'm very happy, Mario, that you are aware about all these things. That That is actually true. That is known as a retroactive accounting. Now, just to make it simple, what Mario has said, I'll take his example only. Uh, uh, you know, let's suppose that you're running the cycle from January to December. And your appraisal, obviously, either they will start in the last week of December for 2022, so that you get, you know, in December, starting of month, they will start it, so that in this January, 2023, you get your appraisal. All right. But by mistake, let's suppose you're, you did not get your appraisal in January. They are giving you in month of uh, March. So two months, uh, which is like January and February, because obviously it will start from the next financial, right? If you're in the USA and European side. So that, that amount, it is known as a retro. That's a one example. Another example, it is, let's suppose the company is uh, has paid you the salary. This is January going on. And let's suppose in October month, you were supposed to get your some bonus, but you did, or maybe some amount that you were supposed to get, but all of a sudden you realize that you have not been paid for it. So you go to the HR, you tell them, you know, they will maintain the data in month of October, and but the payment you will get it in month of January. So that is also known as a retroactive accounting. So, um, so that is a retroactive accounting thing. So here also you can see all this period data, which is talking about. And system is smart enough to understand, you know, that you have maintained a data and it has to pay to the employee. You don't have to do any configuration specifically for this. Then apart from retroactive accounting, this is a US salary slip. Uh, you can see there is only basic it is coming, but obviously there are some more detail it is coming. So you have your earnings, you have your deductions, you have your, how much is a takeaway for an employee, right? What is the employee name? ISO test it is coming. So what is an employee name? What all other detail it is coming? So it will show you all this detail. Now payroll also consists of your company contribution, retiral, loan advances, bonuses, off cycle, computation, time related information, director of active accounting, taxation, reimbursement, deductions, right? All these factors comprises of your payroll. How we run the payroll process? First thing we check the payroll evaluation schema. Then we run the payroll, then we generate the salary slip, we pull out the report. We also post to the finance because finance team are the only team who uh, do your balance sheet and profit and loss account writing. How, how we do your posting to the finance that again, something we will discuss it with a regular session. And once finally everything has been approved and everything has been done, then you go ahead and transfer your salary employee in their bank, right? It looks like it's a, there's a lot of thing, but all these things happens in one or two days only. 
it does not take so much of time if you have maintained all the data proper and everything data maintenance is the only time you know which it takes then there is also something which is known as a mid-year go live what is mid-year go live it is like for example if you're following january to december what happens people who join in the month of june how are you going to calculate your taxes and and also it's like you know that if they bring their taxes from some another company do you want to show that into the taxes because at the end of a form 16 if you're going to generate you will have you will have to maintain all these details right so that is also their theme how you want to maintain it your mid-year go live detail and then apart from this these are the certain uh, your report you can pull out all the report i'll give you the list of a uh, transaction that from where you can pull out all these reports your form 16 these are the report here we're going to see all these the standard report his report we're going to see manager desktop ad hoc query business warehouse report and then finally with the pcr and schema now this is how we write into the pcr and schema and uh, uh, you know so there are certain standard schema and inside that schema uh, if you want to write your own schema you can do that but in you know inside this schema you write your pcr so you can see this is how your pcr looks like now this one looks like very complex but do not worry uh, uh, you know, there are certain PCR which you can write. So at least a basic of PCR and schema, I will certainly cover it so that you understand, start understanding how the PCR and schema you have to write when your client requires to go ahead with the schema and PCR. And with the US payroll team, you also have a two thing more, which is known as a garnishment. And uh, so here you will see all these garnishment. So, uh, you know, what is garnishment? Garnishment is nothing, it's just your like for example, you have taken, you're working in US, in New York. You have taken a loan of 20,000 US dollar, 10,000 US dollar you have paid, but you got a job in another company, which is in California. You shifted in California, realizing that, you know, they will not be able to track you and, you know, you can enjoy that 10,000 pay, but uh, the bank which you have taken a loan, they will approach to the court and the court will find it out where you are from the social security number. And then, you know, they will take out that money from you. So such kind of a detail, it is known as a garnishment. Another kind of a garnishment, it is like you, uh, you know that, you know, like uh, people, they get divorced and uh, whoever is the earning partner, they have to give some amount to the other partner, right? So those things are also, it is known as a garnishment. Uh, we'll discuss all these details when we'll come into the those garnishments. And the last topic it is there, that is your benefit. There's a lot of benefit, which is, there in the Canada and the US, which is like health benefit, insurance benefits, saving benefit, stock and purchase benefit, credit benefit, miscellaneous and flexible and accounting. How we configure all these benefits, how it is linked to the payroll, what it comes into the health, like your teeth benefit, your health, the dental benefit, your health benefit, right? So uh, then you also have a stock and purchase, right? A stock and option, which is there if the company is giving insurance benefit, there is certain organization in India, they also provide you the uh, certain uh, insurance detail, right? So that also you get it as a, if there is any perks or something, which is your organization given. So all these details, we will see into your benefit. Now with this, I think I'll stop my demo session. Let me know if you people have any question team. Are there any prerequisites for one that wants to learn HCM? There's no prerequisite. There's a prerequisite for success factor. There's no prerequisite for both the thing, actually. But yeah. if you're learning ECP, the prerequisite is you should know the SAP HCM payroll. Okay. Oh, okay. If you're learning uh, uh, success factors payroll, that's what you mean. Yes. Okay. Uh, in success factor payroll, what they call it as an ECP, employee central payroll. So if you want okay. to learn the success factor payroll, you should learn first EC, uh, SAP HCM because ECP is nothing, it's just an integration with your SAP HCM. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Any how many modules are with HCM? We're going to cover um, uh, your organization management, personal administration, time management, negative and positive, including PCR and schema. We're going to cover the payroll. PCR and schema, okay. then uh, uh, garnishment and benefit. So these are the modules we're going to cover.
So we are going to configure uh, everything in each module, right? Yes, obviously. It's a technical session team. So obviously we're going to configure everything into the session. Uh, my first session will always start with the theory session uh, because not many people there are aware about certain theory. So after first session, everything will get down into a technical session. So uh, understand that you have opted for a technical uh, career. So obviously the training will also happen in technical way. It will not be the management session. It, it's not going to be the theory theory session because one batch which I was taking it, it was from the US. And after certain five, six session, you know, the person asked me, where is theory? Then I have to tell him, I said, you have opted for a technical session, right? You have not opted for the management session. So I'm just making it very clear that your 90% or 95% of your all the session, it will be the technical session. Okay. 